Anion Naseo Chun Okiran Nil Urian Whale by Chun Myung Kwan. Chun's Whale is considered to be a modern classic. I completely understand why it would be considered a modern classic because this book is absolutely incredible. If a fat mustachioed ginger man were indeed just trying to play off like he's trying to lose some weight isn't enough to convince you, then members of BTS absolutely love this book too. And if you don't listen to BTS, oh, are you late too? Eh, no, we're on. Are you happy now? Because if I ruled the world, sipping on that coffee wouldn't allow an attack on Bantan. They can sing, they can dance, they can sound three rounds. Let's not get sidetracked. Whale is charming, like love in school. Knew all those I was listening to BTS would finally pay off. What a stupid intro. For all the admiration like a throw towards Chun Whale, it's quite difficult to explain exactly what it is. It is a triptych of fable, of folklore, of oral tradition, laden with magic realism, absurdism and surrealism, all whilst trying to articulate and to explore South Korea throughout the 20th century. We start Whale at the end where Chun He is to be imprisoned for arson, a reason we're not entirely sure why, and following her escape from prison, returning to the Queen of the Red Bricks, her mother's brick making facility, where she continues to make bricks. It's from these derelict kilns that we traverse back through Chun He's family tree to figure out how all of this has happened. Which is where we learn about Chun He's grandmother, an old crone, who is basically raping a half-wit with a 30 centimeter penis. It's graphic and it's gratuitous, but it showcases that Chun He's family all do things outside of what is to be expected. Throughout Will Chun repeats and emphasizes that there are laws that are to be abided by, where description will end with this is the law of X. Why, Z, this is the law of brick making, this is the law of love, this is the law of daughters. But the problem here is that these laws aren't written down. It's tradition, it's convention, these are things that you should do. It's not illegal to not do them, it's just frowned upon. So we have this concrete transgression which occurs, which ultimately bears to offspring. We have Gumbok and her sister, which is subsequently later to be sold for two jars of honey. It is Gumbok who is Chun Chi's mother. She is going to transgress against tradition. She's going to go against these laws. But Gumbok's transgressions aren't gratuitous and they're not graphic. Instead, they are entrepreneurial. Gumbok will fall in love with many men, use them for the resources that she needs to swiftly abandon them for the next person who will be able to make her more wealthy, more successful within life. Gumbok, who begins drying fish, ultimately ends up creating kills. These bricks that are stamped with the town's name Pyong Dai, which is nothing like its namesake, will create Pyong Dai into something equally unlike its namesake. Businessmen who understand the quality of these bricks will travel long distances to Pyong Dai. And one of the questions these businessmen says is, well, why isn't your number on these bricks? I want to make an order of you. How do I do that? The Gumbok has to say, well, there's no electricity here. I don't have a phone number. Brick upon brick, nothing is as magnificent to Gumbok as the whale theater, which is built like the shape of a whale. All the way back before she started drying fish, she saw out of the ocean a whale cresting, and she sees the whale as a symbol of life overcoming death, and therefore builds what I see the theater as her legacy. It is something that will continue, although the whale is her gift to the world, her gift, her absolute treasure, is Chun He, a moot girl. Chun He herself is equally transfixed with a great animal who seems to be able to overcome death. Now that's Jumbo, the elephant, which she can talk to. Jumbo, like all things, will perish and die, but Chun He has a spiritual connection. And, and the end of Whale, I think, is bittersweet. It is tender, and it's not heavy-handed with how Chun He and Jumbo are to reunite. I think it's a really beautiful ending towards all of this. The entrepreneurial spirit of Gumbok definitely does permeate and her legacy is rife within the town of Pong Dai, but it's ultimately to the downfall of Chun He, who doesn't innovate, so but so carries on. And Chun shows that without innovation, without 
entrepreneurialism that things can die, things can end. Unwritten laws, just like the bricks, were forged by the past. It doesn't mean that although they did and can influence a generation, that that is going to continue down the line. This is a wonderful book. Not that I thought that reading about brick making would be somewhat enthralling, but Chad allows the reader to get lost. There's enough intrigue about all the magical realism elements that just keep you on your toes, such as a one-eyed woman who can control bees, and such the fact that one character just changes gender, and, and Chad right to the effect that, well, you could change your name whenever you want these days, and, and now you could change your gender, so I'm just doing that for no real reason at all. But there is a reason for that, because that character is not conforming to the ideals, to the traditions, to the unwritten laws from the past. They don't abide by that. They have forged themselves into something new. It's a pleasure to read, and for that I've given it a 9 out of 10, and I definitely think this is one book that you should 1000% go out, buy, read, and just, just take it all in. It's wonderful. I think I could do one more album. Whale, though tender, is bittersweet like a school love affair. It was like a boy in love reading. It's like a South Korean friend, a soulmate, some may say. I don't know where Whale has been in my life. Like, where did you come from? You just came into my life one day, and I hope that you read this tomorrow. I read it cover to cover. You could tell that I'm a spine breaker. I just had to jump on the camera to tell you how much I love this. I almost want to propose. I might be Mr. KD, but you're Miss Right Whale. What can I say? I like it.